What's your legacy? Do you have plans for how people will remember you, um, future generations? For some, dating back to the Tower of Babel, they wanted a legacy. They wanted a tower for which people could remember them by. You may think of the legacy of maybe people who hold important political offices like presidents that are kept on record, stored for generations to come, and oftentimes detailed in their presidential libraries. But what about for you? What legacy do you want to be remembered by? What is the most important thing that you could say, if I've done anything, it's this? Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, actually addressed an issue of that nature when there was a church that was divided based on leaders, religious leaders in their churches, that they were like, well, I follow this person, I follow that person. And they were so divided that they were more focused on the person proclaiming the message than they were on God. Let's read a little bit into Paul's advice on this situation. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. And still another, I follow Cephas. Yet another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Paul made it clear that his legacy was not that he baptized people, he wasn't crucified for their sins, no one was baptized into his name. He goes on, for Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. If you ask me, the greatest legacy we can leave is simply passing on our faith, whether it's to our own generations to come or, or simply by sharing it to as many people as possible when we have the opportunity. So as we have the opportunity to proclaim the gospel, whether it's from the front of church through musicianship or, or singing, or maybe it's one of those things that's considered behind the scenes, if you're part of our audio and visual crew, you have such an important job of proclaiming the gospel. And it's okay if people don't know who you are. In fact, I almost wish that people wouldn't know who I was because if I simply exist to share the message of Christ, that I've accomplished my goal. I want to read one final thing that Paul says in this section. This is from chapter 2. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Let that be our mission and goal. Spread the word. Let's not make our names known, but let's resolve to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified.